in yellow, Fabian Cancellara, but we look at the overall contenders and how they did, Bob, after the first couple days. Contador, 18 seconds behind the Swiss. Spartacus Cadell Evans, the Australian who's finished second the past two years at Tour de France, sitting in fifth. Any surprises, Robbie Ventura, from the uh, overall contenders? Uh, did you see anything in the stage one time trial to differentiate between a lot of men who can win this race? Uh, you know, I, I was disappointed in a couple of the, the GC guys that I thought would do well, but I think overall, except for Dennis Menchoff, all the players are there. Here in Arl, a great shot of the Roman amphitheater built around 80 AD. A little before Tyler Farah came on the scene, the new American sensation is certainly going to be known. If he's not a household name yet, he certainly will be after this year. Aggression. When I think about Tyler Farah, I think aggression. Even though he is probably the nicest guy on the entire planet, he's easygoing, he's relaxed, he's disciplined, he behaves. You know, he's one of these guys who is super, super coachable. Yeah, Tyler is definitely a super strong rider. I got to do a few races with him uh, late in the season and uh, was very impressed. Tyler is a fighter, you know, like some races he like, he's really motivated for and some races he's not. And some races he's using, like the races he's not super motivated for, he's using to build for the races he's really psyched for. The guy just wants to unleash and, he, and sometimes you almost like are holding him back with a ball and chain and he pulls so hard. Tyler Farrar's uh, possibilities are endless, you know, from what I saw with him last year. You know, he's truly one of the most talented types of riders I've seen. It started quite well. Yeah, I won two stages in the overall down in the Bahamas, wore the leader jersey in California. I mean, that's kind of the, the premier race in America, so for an American riding on an American team, it doesn't get you know, too much bigger. There's a few days that will definitely be sprints and a few more days where you know, it'll just depend how the race plays out, but you know, I'll be going for him. I think it suits me well. It's pretty short, flat, and fast. It's who's fastest, you know? You just have to get into the race and do the sprint and see what happens. Tyler, he's a guy who wants to win. He wants to win really, really bad. The United States has been waiting a long time for a sprinter to come along that's competitive in the Tour de France, and Tyler Farah did not waste any time. Second on stage number two of this year's tour. Great riding by the Garmin sprinter, and it's wonderful to have a man that can compete in at least half of the stages of this year's tour. Ten sprinters for stages for the sprinters. Robbie, you've spent a lot of time around the Garmin slipstream crew. What impresses you the most about Tyler? The guy's, the guy's attitude is, is incredible. I mean, he's not very emotionally high or low. He saves all of that emotion for that final 500 meters when you really need to unleash all that excitement and all that passion. But his attitude, he's so calm. He's so confident. He's happy all the time. He's just a guy that, that I'm really excited to follow the rest of this tour and for tours beyond because he is a superstar. Both of you weigh in on this, but is that somewhat of a, a, a it, when you look at his personality, that calmness that you say, is that an oxymoron for a sprinter to be considered calm? Usually, that's not the case. For sure. I mean, most sprinters are very, very passionate. They have the highest highs and the lowest lows. They're very flamboyant, very excitable. I think he's that way, but only when he has to be, which is in the last couple of kilometers. I think, ultimately, he's like a silent killer. You know, he just, he only, he only pulls out the stops when he needs to. He conserves his emotions at the other times during the tour. That's a really good question, the mentality of the sprinters, because we generally see them when they are the most seething and raging, and that's the last 200 meters of the race. So it's sometimes hard to tell what their real character is like and it's nice to know that Tyler Farah is a very nice guy off the bike and in the other situations and these guys spend so much time together throughout the year throughout their careers that you really have to have good rapport with your teammates you can't be too much of a maniac and expect them to work for you so Tyler Farah has a big future in this sport and it's great to see another sprinter from America well when you guys were riding I mean you bring up the fact of that connectivity with the teammates is it easier to follow a guy that just gets results and might not be the best guy in terms of personality or do you like to feel like you're bonded with a guy who also has a chance to win I think I think the sprinters that ultimately have the most success are the ones that really tribute their success to their teams I think they want to be recognized and I think Tyler does a great job of that you can see Cavendish does a good job recognizing his team and ultimately if you're winning bike races you're supporting your teammates and and you know like Bob said you you can kind of keep those emotions in check after the race you're gonna have a, a lot of support not only from your teammates but the other racers as well. 
go back to just what we saw in the pictures, the riders crossing the Rhone River, which, believe it or not, starts all the way up on a glacier in Switzerland, which we'll be visiting a bit later on, Bob. We'll be in Verbier. We can get some of uh, the, the headwaters <laughs> of the Rhone River, one of the best wine-growing regions in the whole world, the upper and lower Rhones, and uh, I think we uh, might have to uh, imbibe a little bit. <laughs> I'm with you. Okay. Count me on the same team. Still with this time gap, it is Bouet, Maxime Bouet from Agritubel, the virtual leader out on the road, only a minute and 39 seconds behind Fabian Cancellara. Bouet having a great year so far as we take a look at the moment at the Cofidis rider Samuel Dumoulin, who won the mountain jersey at four days of Dunkirk. This is his sixth Tour de France, certainly the most seasoned of the breakaway artists. Robbie, great to have you with us today. We'll look forward to as many days as you can joining us up in the booth. As long as I don't get lost, I'll be up here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. But the, the navigation's gone well so far. Navigation's good. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a much better job. We've got dueling GPSs. we got everything covered. <laughs> Way to go. All right, we'll look forward to talking to you perhaps tomorrow. Bob and I will be back very shortly. The rider is still with a lot of work to do. Infinity G hardtop convertible, the latest in the remarkable Infinity G line. Hey, it's our friend Bob. Looks like Bob continues to enjoy the big lift he gets from Enzite and natural male enhancement. With over 10 million packs sold, Enzite is firmly the number one selling brand, bringing true natural male enhancement to men all over the world. Now you can join Bob and the millions of men who fully enjoy the benefits of Enzite. Just call or visit Enzite.com for a sample pack of the strongest, most powerful Enzite formula yet. Enjoy the full, robust confidence that only Enzite can provide. If you've ever been curious about natural male enhancement, there's never been a better time to try a sample pack of Enzite. Visit Enzite.com or call toll-free for a sample pack. Call right now and you'll also get two free packs of Enzite Topical Rush. With an offer this big, it's enough to throw a parade. Sample packs are in stock now and shipped to you within 48 hours. Offer only good while supplies last. Limit one per household. Enzite, the once daily tablet for natural male enhancement. To avoid cholesterol problems, I get checked every year and take garlic every day. Just one garlic daily helps maintain healthy cholesterol with a clinically proven ingredient that's safe and all natural. Good cholesterol, great checkups. Garlic. Last appointment, my dermatologist said, lotion with sunscreen all over. Introducing Gold Bond Ultimate Protection Body Lotion. Moisturizers, vitamins, plus sunscreen. Soft and safe every day. New Gold Bond Ultimate Protection. This stuff really works. Michelle has had leukemia since she was two. The Coleman twins were born 24 weeks premature. Max had his first surgery when he was three days old. These kids are alive today, and it's a real miracle. When your child needs help, there's a Children's Miracle Network hospital nearby. Go to childrensmiraclenetwork.org to support our hospitals helping local kids. You can follow the world's best riders online with exclusive tour content at Versus.com. One of those things is the Map My Ride Le Tour Challenge. You can sign up at Versus.com. Already over 12,500 people riding every day, trying to match themselves against the best in the business. The goal actually is to be at 180,000, excuse me, 18,000 by the first rest day, which would be 100 times the number in the tour. 74 countries enlisted, every state in the U.S. Yesterday, they rode over 9,000 hours, Bob, in comparison to these guys. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. As a of group, <laughs> I think they get the win. <laughs> I wonder what the watts would be on average, uh, the per capita watts. That would be interesting. We could find that out. Perhaps by tomorrow, they'll give us that information. But a great uh, promotion going on between Versus and Map My Ride. Sign up today. Be a part of it. Astana, they're getting in the mix as well. Garmin Slipstream. Robobank perhaps deciding to for a little payback today after Oscar Frere's mishaps going the wrong way. 
overall standings right at the bottom of your screen Levi Leipheimer in sixth Roman Kreuziger in the white jersey as best young rider he's in seventh Tony Martin a good time trial on stage one Vincenzo Nibali Italian rider and Lance Armstrong rounding out the top ten four riders still out in front we'll give you those names again Maxime Bouet Ruben Perez Kuhn de Court and Samuel Dumoulin Dumoulin from Kofidis the experienced rider of the bunch perhaps he's the one who's telling them exactly how they need to work in order to stay in front of these guys. Not an incredibly fast overall speed today. Perhaps those conditions really taking their toll. About 65 kilometers to go, just over 40 miles. But what we're seeing, at least from the pictures, Bob, is all the teams who have a sprinter are now coming to the front. Most definitely all the, the sprinter's teammates will be um, moving to the front now. It's still a long ways to go, so there will be a reshuffling of the pack quite a few times before we get into the finishing straightaway. But you want to start to move up long before the accelerations begin. If you try to start moving up from the back of the field, once they've already started to go uh, maximum velocity at the front, it's going to take a lot longer. Also, it's going to take a lot more energy, and you might use up the energy you have for the sprints before you get close enough to the front to start that. So it's a balancing act. These roads seem to be a little bit uh, wider, a little bit broader, most definitely a lot flatter than yesterday's stage. And this is the flattest stage of this year's tours, who so a real speedster is going to win today's stage. The last 80 kilometers of this stage are completely dead flat. They have done about 15 to 20 of those at the moment. And it seems as though a lot of the director sportifs, a lot of the men in the cars who are talking on the radios to these riders, which they can do at any time during a stage, a lot of them seem to be waiting for that opportunity, that 80 kilometer mark. That's about the uh, the magic point, yes, when uh, it starts to heat up day in and day out on the flatter stages. And also it depends a little bit on the time gap to the breakaway always calculating how much time you need to get back from the riders that are in the front. It's a very similar pattern to yesterday's stage, except the time is much bigger in this year, in this, in today's stage. And so the chances of catching them are going to be a little bit less. And the energy required to close that gap is going to be quite a bit more. We'll get back to the riding in a moment, but what that does is allows us to welcome back the Don of the Peloton, Phil Liggett. Good to have you here with us again. Every day we're going to celebrate an American cycling story during the tour, and Phil, as you know, 180 riders out on the road, but not one of them can win without his team, and Lance Armstrong has known that since day one. No, that's absolutely right. Lance Armstrong, of course, is back. It's his second time he's come back to the sport of cycling, and I have to say his presence already being felt. But, you know, the Tour de France is a team race. Lance has always made sure he's got the best team around him throughout history. But, you know, even his team has their ups and downs. Sometimes you are judged more by how you respond to adversity as how you respond to success. There's a crash in the postal team, there's a touch of wheels, two riders are down here on the floor. In one short instant, Lance Armstrong and the US Postal Service team went from delivering the mail to fighting for their lives through rain, sleet and snow. That crash put two key teammates, Roberto Heras and Christian van der Velde, on the tarmac. And the question quickly became, to wait or to move on without them. But there was little doubt here who was in charge and the right course of action taken. They waited for their two teammates, and while experts estimated the team may have lost a minute as a result of this decision, it did work wonders for team unity. Perhaps that's where they forged the trust that enabled them to pull off the bluff five days later on Alpe d'Huez, and moreover, led to one of the most dominating performances in recent memory. With the support of the Posties, Lance won four stages, including the Queen stage to Pladade, where the support of his fallen comrade, Roberto Heras, proved invaluable. A stunning crash that brought together a team and wrote another chapter in the incredible story of Lance Armstrong. Phil, you used the word comeback, the team time trial making a comeback this year after a few years off. The last time we saw the event, Lance Armstrong team Discovery Channel crushed the competition. Mm. So do you think Astana is going to do the same tomorrow? I think, again, he's got a great team around him, of course. Uh, they could choose a win in Alberta Condor, uh, Andrews Cloud, and Levi Leipheimer, or Lance, and they could all be on the podium. So that's a good team. So in the team time trial, yes, they will be the team to beat. Right, Bob? Bob? 
I think so, but uh, I don't know. If you pick them, they might get fifth. Uh, well, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness, you're absolutely right. Astana has a great team here. If you look at four guys in the top ten in a 15-kilometer yeah. time trial, those four guys could do all the tempo and probably beat the majority of the team. So it's going to be a very good stage on the team time I'm trial. I'm glad stage. that's back in the tour. The precision yeah, of the team time trial always is a thing of beauty, Phil, without, mm -hmm. without question. But what are some of the critical elements that we should be looking for that are going to make the difference? between winning and losing? Well, I think the key element is practice, practice, and practice, because you've got to learn to race with a group of nine riders, and you've got to learn to do it together. Now, that team, Astana, went down just uh, 48 hours before this tour began and rode the whole time trial route as a team. And they say it's very, very technical and not like the usual high road routes, lots of ducking and diving. Now, when you're operating with nine men who are separated by less than half an inch in each other's slipstream, then the wind changes direction, so you must change direction as well. You've got to know what each other is going to do and when he's going to come automatically. If you get that right, that's worth half a minute in itself. No question that tomorrow becomes a big day, not just for Team Astana, but for all the teams. The precedent was set in stage number one. Astana, four out of the top ten riders. Yesterday, of course, Lance Armstrong, a casual day, although a very hot day in the peloton. Nervousness. However, tomorrow, he'll get a chance to show his stuff. My Impreza has a Subaru Boxer engine. It's perfectly balanced for performance and handling. I love that engine. And I love anyone else who loves a Subaru engine too. Impreza love knows no bounds. Love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Lease a Subaru Impreza for $179 per month with only $12.99 due at signing. Every 60 seconds, someone, somewhere, is making the switch to Tempur-Pedic. Now, it's your turn. Call now for your free information kit, including a temper material sample, along with a DVD and catalog. Traditional mattresses use metal springs that can cause pressure points, causing you to toss and turn. Only the Tempur-Pedic mattress automatically adjusts to your body while keeping your spine in perfect alignment. Plus, because Tempur-Pedic doesn't transfer motion, you won't disturb your partner when you get out of bed or shift positions. Best of all, Tempur-Pedic will let you sleep on one of their sleep systems for an incredible 90 nights before you make your purchase decision. If you want the ultimate in comfort, if you wish to get more sleep but can't, it's time you make the switch to Tempur-Pedic. Call 1-800-845-0531 for your free information kit. That's 1-800-845-0531. Call today. in a family with my dad winning the Indy 500 if you take some heat. There's really no sport like it. We're inches apart, wheel to wheel, and one touch, you're gone. I did 19 last year, and it's kind of a crazy feeling. You got all these friends at college taking history exams, yet I'm sitting there going 230 miles an hour. It's a crazy lifestyle. That's how it goes. It's gotta be a new race. I learned a lot when I found out I had high cholesterol but I didn't know that it may have led to my erectile dysfunction. That's why my doctor told me about Levitra. Certain medical conditions, including high blood pressure, diabetes, and high cholesterol can decrease blood flow, which may lead to ED. That was news to me. My doctor told me Levitra could help. Levitra works by increasing blood flow to help treat ED. Levitra works for me. Maybe it can work for you. Ask your doctor if you are healthy enough for sexual activity. If you have heart problems, are on alpha blocker therapy, or have uncontrolled high blood pressure, talk to your doctor before taking Levitra. Do not take Levitra if you take nitrates for chest pains, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects may include headache, flushing, and stuffy or runny nose. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help if you experience an erection lasting longer than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss of vision or hearing, stop taking Levitra and call your doctor right away. Ask your doctor if Levitra is right for you. The 
first week of the tour is not one for the faint of heart. That is for sure, Bob. Always the sprinters, the teams, not just the sprinters teams, but all the teams nervous because the sprinters know with those flat stages, it's their chance to shine. But with those chances also comes high speeds and high percentages of crashes. Absolutely. And also the peloton generally a little bit larger the first week of the tour as riders drop out. You start with 180 riders or 189. You get down to about 130, 140 at the end of the tour. So the last week, a lot less crashes just because of the big field going through all of these small roads. The chances are that much increased that you'll get in caught in a crash. Speaking of crashes, let's take a look at some of the things that went on yesterday. It wasn't just that crash at the finish. Let's go back to action from stage number two. A number of guys went down early. Frank Schleck going down on this one. Very disappointed to fall. Almost nothing transpired for any of the overall contenders except that man from the Saxo Bank squad, winner of Alpe d'Huez a couple of years ago. Frank Schleck was able to get back into the field without too much trouble, but those cuts, scrapes, and bruises are really bothersome overnight. Here's another crash. Big pile up right in the middle of the field. Some of the riders not able to stop in time. When you have a touch of wheels, you just plow into the men in front of you. And uh, that's an inevitable part of the Tour de France. And one, if you want to win, you have to avoid. This was the crash at the end. Coldo Fernandez from Euskadi, Euskadi, not knowing which way to go. He took out a number of the sprinters who were hoping to be part of that last dash for the line. Fernandez seeming to think the road went straight there because there was a little bit of gap in the, in the spectators and the fencing. And that was a complete disaster for the for Fernandez going down hard at, right at the front of the One field. One guy that we didn't even see video of was Jurgen Van de Walle from Quick Step. He has left the tour with a broken collarbone and a punctured right lung. Crashes are a part of the Tour de France. The first thing you hear in a crash is usually the sound of metal on, on tarmac. Oh, Ulrich's gone oh. down. Ulrich is dashed. That's not pretty. It's one of the worst sounds you can hear. Oh, there's been a crash! A massive pile of... Oh! And there's another crash! Oh. What's happened? Oh, 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 And there's a very nasty fall. One of the worst sounds is when it's a thump, because, you know, that's uh, a leg or something. And that's what makes the bad noise. When you see that you're coming into a crash, you know, like, oh, f this is gonna hurt. And then, fall over you. Handlebar, so it's not very nice at all, actually. And the big falls are, are always in slow motion where it feels like you're falling for five or six seconds. That's what really takes the time is when you finally hit the ground, it's all in slow motion. It's painful and, I mean, we continue riding afterwards and the day after you're trying to sleep and you all get road rash over your whole legs and arms and everything and you wake up and the sheets are stuck in your skin. It's, uh, it's terrible. Sometimes you're in the wrong place in the wrong time and there's nothing you can do about it. 20 guys fall in front of you, what are you going to do? You're going to fall in the pile. I think one of the tricks to being a bike racer is forgetting a lot of stuff. I don't like to focus on any of that stuff. The crashing for me is uh, not really fun, <laughs> as for most guys. To be honest, you just try not to worry about it. If you're always worried about crashes, that's not going to help you in bike racing at all. Best point I heard just there is you need to have a short and selective memory. That's for sure, Bob, if you want to be a bike racer. Most definitely you need to be able to put those out of your mind and carry on with the job at hand, and that is getting to the finish line as quickly as possible. Ruben Perez out in front. You would expect the four who have been out in front all day long, not necessarily to show that they're tiring, but you wouldn't expect any of them to crash going at the front at the moment as Kuhn de Court from the skill Shimano side. And look at this. We just see about crashes, and one happens right here. Big pile up, a few of the uh, riders from the Lamprey squad. That looks to be Marcio Brusegui, perhaps going down hard. Their teammates waiting. Sometimes when you have all of your men in the same part of the peloton, and that happens a lot, you want to talk to your teammates. If there is a crash, you can lose three or four guys. Lamprey, bad luck to Brusegui, one of Angelo Furland's lead-out men. So Furland's chances just reduce slightly in today's finale to win the stage. Looked like there might have been also a Saxo Bank rider in there as well, which is a bit surprising because they've been close to that front part of the peloton throughout. But a chance now, also what these crashes do, don't they, Bob, is, is they take away some of that speed of the peloton, that mass that is actually 
aerodynamically faster. It could allow the breakaway to stay ahead just a little bit more, and sure enough, it pops up by a couple seconds right there. Especially if one of the big stars of the tour is caught in one of these crashes, sometimes there will be an easing of tempo. And uh, here we see that it was indeed Martio Brusseguin, 35th overall, pretty close to the time of Fabian, Fabian Cancellara in stage one's time trial. Looks like some damage to the knee there being attended to by the team doctor who's in the front seat. And maybe some uh, damage to the bicycle as well. But the machine seems to be going well. And uh, there is the ice spray. Try to coagulate the blood a little bit and uh, put some antiseptic on there. You don't want to do any kilometers at all with uh, open wounds being exposed to the rushing wind. Very painful when you fall down. I was going to say also, you don't want to try this at home. I mean, this is absolutely incredible. He's allowed because he's receiving medical attention, isn't he, to hold on to the car while this goes on. That is one of the gentleman agreements, uh, not especially in the rules, but uh, you can when you need assistance from the medical team on your team or the, the ones that are provided by the tour, you can hold on to one of the doctor's cars as you get back into the field. And we don't ever want to see a rider being eliminated from the tour because uh, he wasn't treated too adequately by the medical uh, professions. And here's the teammates of Bruce Aguin sent back by the team manager. This is one of the good parts of the team radios. If we didn't have the radio, he would have to, team manager would have to drive through the field and try to alert one of uh, Bruce Aguin's teammates and tell him to wait for Bruce Aguin, who's been involved in a crash. You don't always see everything in the peloton, and uh, and that's why the radios, it's a, it's a toss-up. They're going to try it, though, in a few stages in this year's tour without them, so we'll see how that goes. That's brought up a lot of debate, hasn't it, amongst not just the riders, but also the director sportives. There we see the blood definitely coming down. Pretty significant wound there to Bruce Aguin, and uh, he'll perhaps make Maybe need some stitches to that um, overnight after the stage is over. Looks as though the peloton has regrouped yet again. Is it time for them to make a final assault on the men who have been out front since the first kilometer after that neutral start? They went one kilometer and then bam, two guys off the front. It was Bouet and Dumoulin, and then Perez and Decourt would launch at five kilometers. The four would be together at 10 kilometers, and since then, they've been out in front. They avoided this latest crash, but can they stay in front all day? At TireRack.com, we don't just sell tires, we test them on our unique test track. Our results are honest, unbiased, and as real as it gets. Use this information to help decide which tires are right for you, your vehicle, how you drive it, and where you drive it. It's not just a test track, it's truth serum for tires. And it's only a tire rack, the Tire Rack Test Track. One more way, Tire Rack is revolutionizing the way you buy tires. TireRack.com, research, buy, deliver, install. The relationship you have with your car isn't so different from your other relationships. Some burn hot and fast, but don't last very long. Some burn for a while, but don't throw much heat. And some smolder beautifully for a long time. The award-winning Cadillac CTS sedan. And coming soon, the all-new CTS Ford Wagon. Stress, eating on the run. Diarrhea stops me in my tracks. Stop it fast with KO Pectane. Unlike pills, KO speeds to the source, shutting down diarrhea and its discomfort fast. Really fast. Stop diarrhea fast with KO Pectate. Last appointment, my dermatologist said lotion with sunscreen all over. Introducing Gold Bond Ultimate Protection Body Lotion. Moisturizers, vitamins, plus sunscreen. Soft and safe every day. New Gold Bond Ultimate Protection. This stuff really works. It's this symbol of superiority for which they all fight. But every tournament only has one champion. 2009 will take a select few to legendary heights and bring others to their knees. But they continue the fight with some fresh faces entering the fray. Because it's what they know, it's what they do best. Watch the Champions Tour all season long on Golf Channel. Versus delivers sports from soup. Sports soup for everyone. To nuts. First at 11. No one in the sports world can hide from sports soup's Matt Eisman. Then, pride and passion mix with a dose of insanity when the fans take over on Fanarchy. I'm going to eat this cat. Sports soup and Fanarchy. Tuesday night only on Versus.
Hello again, everybody. Along with Bob Roll, I'm Craig Hummer. Now, Bob, there's a rumor that you single-handedly, brick by brick, built the cycling wing of the Mensa campus. Yeah, most of those bricks fell on my head, too, while I was learning. <laughs> it's all inside your head, isn't it? It's somewhere in there. We're having a hard time accessing it, though, most of the time. <laughs> Bob's pain is your gain. Why? Because it's time for our Ask Bob Key segment yet again here for stage number three. Let's get to that question from Michael Olson. Dear Bob, while watching stage number two, I noticed that the four-man breakaway seemed to ride in a two-by-two two square or diamond pattern. Wouldn't it have been more advantageous to ride single file? Oh, absolutely. Good question by Michael Olson. And it would be much more aerodynamically advantageous to ride in a single file. A much better profile going into the wind. Four guys into the front. Well, that's very boxy and not very uh, advantageous in an aerodynamic sense. Here's our breakaway from yesterday. You can see the riders pretty erect also. So they're taking up a lot of wind and then they get back into the line. I think also you're you're calculating who's doing the least amount of work and you don't want to be the man in the breakaway that does all the work. This is a much better profile aerodynamically. Generally we see this in the team time trial. The rider in front is doing 100% of the work. The riders behind are doing between 75 and 80% of the work. So when you're sitting at the front you're doing a lot of work and as you sit behind you're saving energy and that's what's critical to the success of a breakaway and when riders are side by side and doing a little turn and then pulling over they are not really going as fast as they could. Well you can use the perfect example of what to do also from stage number two in direct contrast to what we just showed you go to the finish of the stage Columbia they put everything in motion and did everything right. You can see when it goes right that the riders are all in single file this is a much better aerodynamic shape to cut through the wind but Mark Cavendish accelerating off the wheel of his two teammates and perfectly led out to the line. That's what we call doing the work, going to the front, taking your turn. Very complicated sport, but absolutely beautiful. Columbia hoping to do that yet again. One question we didn't put on the screen today, but we've been getting a lot of response to are these guys. Our road IDs. Bob, explain what these things are and why they're so important. Road ID, an innovation coming out of the United States. It has a number that the EMTs that respond to any accident can call, get your medical history, any medicines you're allergic to, and of course, make the emergency contact notification immediately. So do not leave home without your road ID. A perfect safety step to take. Let's send it back out to the Peloton. There's Lance Armstrong in the uh, black helmet, yellow stripe to his sleeve in the blue and white of Astana. Two teammates right in front of him. Lance Armstrong will follow them throughout the day and uh, try to keep himself out of danger. He said yesterday it was a pretty reasonable stage as far as he was concerned. I think he's probably feeling pretty good. Well, that smile says a lot, doesn't it? If you're able to smile on a day like this without question, there's, uh, yeah, you're feeling darn good, like you said. So is it Gregory Rast up there today? That's his guardian angel, can you see? Just on the wheel of Lance, now on his shoulder. He'll uh, keep a close eye on Lance Armstrong. And uh, you can see Danilo Napolitano with the uh, very colorful helmet just to the right side of Gregory Rast. And there's another teammate, Aymar Zubeldia, coming into the frame, taking Lance to the front. This is what we call doing the teamwork. Great shots here of Lance. He's gone out to the outside of the peloton. He's going to follow them to the front. This is the forward rotation. You'll see other riders try to jump on Lance's wheel, but he has two teammates ahead of him, and he doesn't have to expend any energy to get right back in the front of the bike race, and that's what you have to do throughout the day. If you're an overall contender like Lance is, you can always count on your teammates, especially when you're of the stature of Lance Armstrong, to take you to the front at the critical moment. So they're getting ready for the finale now, under 50 kilometers to go before the finish, and Lance wants to be as close to the front without doing any energy as he can be. Bringing him to the front, of course, positioning. It's much safer there, not trying to get Lance in position by any means for him to contest the sprint today. The yellow jersey of Fabian Cancellara, he's also putting in a little bit of work. Look at that. You can see the power of Spartacus. Cancellara, that's a good indication of how powerful he is, but things are getting stretched out a little bit. So Cancellara, he's moving up to the front there. There we see Mark Cavendish right on the... See, you can see some crosswinds perhaps starting to uh, disrupt things. Cancellara making a big move to get onto the wheel of Mark Cavendish because he can sense a little bit of danger now. If Team Columbia goes in the gutter and really starts to turn on the speed, well, it's going to be a very tough bike race to the finale. And that's why we saw Lance Armstrong ask two teammates to come to the front, take him up there, and get into the echelons. This could be a very exciting finale. 
You mentioned the winds. Great also that the directors and the teammates, they have this communications with the radios. If the road turns any sort of way, they know that all of a sudden the wind could become an advantage or a disadvantage. A lot of positioning going on right now. We cut up front to the four who are still working together very much so in the lead. Sammy Dumoulin seems to have done the most work throughout the breakaway. Here's your per, your leader, Ruben Perez, Sammy Dumoulin, Bouvet, and Kuhn de Court. He's the skill rider from Shimano as Shimano skill team, and it's great to see a new team in the tour this year. And they've uh, been making the breakaways. Had a fifth on the stage yesterday, so good riding by the new team. We figured today was another day for sprinters. Earlier this morning, Robbie Ventura talked with Tyler Farah. Tyler, second place in your first tour sprint stage. You had a chance to sleep on it last night. Yeah. What did that performance yesterday mean to you? Yeah, it's great. You know, it's nice to get the ball rolling with a with a good result. You know, uh, a win, of course, would have been better, but you know, it was we were trying, and uh, I think it just shows that you know everything's on track, everyone's in good shape, and uh, you know the morale's high. So hopefully, we'll uh, it'll go a little better today. Even it's supposed to be pretty windy out there today. Kind of a dicey run into the finish. Um, what are going to be the keys to uh, to you and your team in terms of delivering you with another chance to win? You know, I mean, for the stage as a whole with the wind, I think it'll just be being attentive and, uh, you know, not kind of falling asleep out there and, and missing a big move that goes, which, you know, I'm not too worried about that. You know, we're all, we're all professionals. We know what we need to do. And at the end, like I said, yesterday really went quite well for me Funny as far man. as positioning went. Just, you know, try and do the same thing again and see how it goes. Not looking too far ahead. The team time trial is tomorrow. How do you see your team's chances in the, in that event? Yeah, you know, I mean, team time trials are something that we're we're quite good at, and it's it's a big priority for us. You know, I think you see with all our, our big time trial guys, they went really well uh, two days ago in Monaco. So, I think uh, I think we have to be considered one of the strong teams. Thanks, Tyler. Good luck today. Exhibiting that calm demeanor that Robbie was talking about earlier much doesn't seem to phase him which has suited him well so far most definitely this race is so long and so arduous that any expenditure of energy has to translate into results and if you can't manage your energy you'll never do well in the Tour de France. Well, the peloton a moment ago was very strung out. Now it seems to be coming back together. Lance Armstrong and his team Astana were very attentive. They had moved to the front before anyone. The inherent value of a Range Rover Sport easily handles the ups and downs of sand, mud, and the economy. Range Rover Sport, the luxury that's more than a luxury. John wants everyone to know why our pizza's better, so he's bringing it right to you. This is pizza? totally awesome! Yeah! Pops in the house. Papa John's brings you three medium, three topping pizzas, just $7 each. Everything's better when Papa's in the house. Three medium pizzas, your choice of three Papa John's better toppings, just $7 each. <laughs> May I help you? Yeah, I'm looking for car insurance that isn't going to break the bank. You're in the right place. Only Progressive gives you the option to name your price. Here. A uh, price gun? Mm-hmm. So I tell you what I want to pay. And we build you a policy to fit your budget. That's cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel so empowered. <laughs> Power to the people! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The option to name your price. New and only from Progressive. Call or click today. finally headed home. Make that the video store. If she had Netflix, she could keep her DVDs for as long as she wants. Take
the drama out of renting. Netflix, unlimited movies for $8.99 a month. When the light comes on, just come in. Yeah. Bad boys come in. This week, Manny Moe and Jack bring you the Pet Boys Tire Celebration. Buy one tire for as low as $24.99. Buy any two tires, get a free oil change. Buy any three tires and get the fourth tire free. Through Sunday, get a Pennzoil do-it-yourself oil change. Just $9.99. When the light comes on, just come in. Pet Boys does everything for less. Call 1-800-PET-BOYS or visit PetBoys.com. So let me ask you this, Kobe. You were grimacing a lot in the finals. Is the real reason because you knew you were missing Sports Soup on Versus? How'd you find out? You did. You love Sports Soup on Versus? That's what it was. Kobe, that's what it was, man. <laughs> Tuesday's Versus delivers sports from soup to nuts. First at 11, no one in the sports world can hide from the sports soup, Matt Eisman. And this week, special guest, Kobe Bryant tomorrow night. Then at 11.30, pride and passion mixed with a dose of insanity when the fans take over. Zach Selwyn hosts Fanarchy. Sports soup and Fanarchy back-to-back -back Tuesday tomorrow, right here on Versus. Kobe Bryant probably watching a lot of television lately with another ring, his fourth ring on his finger. Hopefully he's watching us at home. Fabian Cancellara right now enjoying a little bit of a rest as well inside the protection of the peloton. His team has done a lot of work and now perhaps those sprinters teams are going to do the rest of the work and his team can take a bit of the day off. They will still have to stay attentive, of course. Bob, we were just looking at the speeds of the hours as they've gone through, the average speeds of what they've done. About a six-kilometer difference now. They've bumped up the speed in the past hour. Three minutes, 28 seconds lead of the four riders in the front. The rest of uh, the peloton now chasing in earnest with 41.1 kilometers to go. And there is in the yellow jersey right in the center of your screen, Fabian Cancellara, yellow bike uh, in honor of that jersey. I'm wondering if they do so much work to, co to keep that jersey, if they'll have enough energy tomorrow in the team time trial to be able to defend that. And I think that Saxo Bank has probably spent the most energy defending that, that jersey of Fabian Cancellara's team. High Road Columbia has also done quite a bit of work in the finale of yesterday's race to give Mark Cavendish a chance for the stage win. And uh, that's going to be a great stage tomorrow. You do not want to miss the team time trial. It's been out of the tour since 2005, and it is really beautiful to have it back in this year's race. The four teams everyone is talking about for tomorrow's time trial. You can see the jerseys of some of them off to the left. Garmin Slipstream, the orange and the blue. They always are good at the team trial. We heard Tyler Farah talk about that. You can bet they're going to be on their A game. Saxo Bank, as well as you mentioned, Team Astana. Also, four of the top ten guys in that 15-kilometer stage one that we saw. So you got to figure someone on paper, they're also one of the favorites. Oh, most definitely. Saxo Bank has a great team of uh, riders like Fabian Cancellara, incredibly powerful. I think he could go about 55 kilometers an hour uh, by himself. And uh, when he has his eight teammates, they really get some momentum going down the road. I think it's going to be a very disappointing stage for a couple of our other riders who are looking forward to the overall battle once we get into the mountains. I don't see Denny Menchal's team doing a great team time trial. Rabobank here, kind of a team split in two. They have Oscar Frere that can win stages and perhaps a green jersey, and Denny Menchal who's coming off a big win that required a tremendous amount of energy in the Giro d'Italia. Another man that might really suffer in the Team GC, the overall standings tomorrow, is Cadell Evans. He brings not a team as, as fast as the four that you just mentioned, and I think the Team Astana might get a lot of time over Cadell Evans, who's fifth currently and did a great time trial, a solid climber. But to start the mountains, as he may do with two-minute disadvantage, is a disaster for Cadell Evans. Well, exactly, because how do you do that against the four guys that Astana has to offer? Because all Astana needs to do is if Cadell tries to get any time, they can pick and choose, can't they, and send whoever they want of those four to go with them. We move away from the action for a moment and take you inside the Garmin Slipstream bus earlier today. Right, guys, firstly, yesterday, that was a super ride by the team. We rode uh, very well yesterday, and uh, awesome ride, Tyler. I uh, was second, but that was, mate, this, is a tour, this is a Tour de France. And Cavo has shown he's the fastest guy in the world, and there's only one guy that beat in, has beaten him this year, and that's you, mate. We're going to give it another try today. Guys, it's, uh, it's quite a windy one today. The uh, wind from the start are two totally different directions the wind's supposed to come from. And as we turn around, the wind should be a lot stronger in the afternoon from this direction. 
So there'll be a couple of crucial points. The road, the, leading us to the road's good, fine. There's no narrow sections. It's pretty normal, standard road. There's nothing super to worry about. We're not going to show any love to the other teams as far as chasing breaks today. We've got a big day tomorrow. If they want to bring it back, they can bring it back themselves. If we're riding in that first 50, that first 30, we're going to miss nothing. Safety in numbers, rule of the day. So, and the, as far as the finish, guys, uh, there's two options we're going to play. Now it's up to you guys how we do it, how, we, how many guys can help Julian. Because it's quite a dangerous corner at 850 metres to go. We've got two, one, two ways. Either someone's got to put Julian into that corner, either Dave and Martin or both years into that corner first, so Julian can accelerate to that last corner with Tyler on the wheel, or these guys are going to play off Columbia, try to hit out before Renshaw hits out in the sprint. Yeah. That's 5k out there, and that's 850 metres, but that's a big long stretch through there. And then you think that last 800 is going to be dead headwind? Oh, well, we'll I'll talk to someone at the finish and get it, because it's, we all got a southwest the direction of the wind, so we'll give you a heads up on the last finish straight, all right? Same focus as yesterday and nothing can go wrong. All right, look after each other. See you out there. Still plenty of racing to go. Will it be Garmin Slipstream implementing their strategy or will it be Columbia HTC ruling the day again? Yeah, you'll get used to it. The longer you keep your high mileage car, the more it pays you back. Get Castrol GTX High Mileage. It helps engines last longer by fighting the main causes of engine failure. I think a dime went up my nose. Yeah, it happens. Don't change your car, change your oil to Castrol GTX High Mileage. It's more than just oil. It's liquid engineering. When you're ready to tear it up, grab an energy drink. Woo! When you've got a lot to do and you can't afford a letdown, grab a five-hour energy. Hit. This is totally kicking. Five-hour energy keeps you going for hours without a crash, unlike that sugary kid stuff. Whoa, harsh. Well, there's over 12 teaspoons of sugar per can. Just look. Gross. Five-hour energy does it all without the sugar. You'll go from groggy to get it done. You mean, like, work? Yeah, you should try it sometime. Five-hour energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. Do aches, pains, and arthritis have you in their grip? Break the grip with Aspergreen Heat Gel. Extra Strength Medicine delivers penetrating heat relief without embarrassing odor. Fast pain relief that keeps you going for hours. Aspergreen, break the grip of pain. Travel, stress, eating on the run. Diarrhea stops me in my tracks. Stop it fast with KO Pectate. Unlike pills, KO speeds to the source, shutting down diarrhea and its discomfort fast. Really fast. Stop diarrhea fast with KO Pectate. There's more excitement coming to Blackhawk. Are you ready for Blackhawk's 24-hour fun? Blackhawk, bet up to $100. Are you ready for the thrill of craps and roulette? Same Blackhawk, more ways to win. Now playing. most coveted piece of clothing in the Tour de France is the green jersey with one win, Bob. Mark Cavendish on top. Cavendish locking in on that. Tyler Farrar, Roman Feyu, Tor Husha. Basically, that's your finishing order from stage number two. Paul Sherwin explains why this is a jersey many have fought for over the years. I'm not a guy who's going to win the Tour de France. So the second best is green in the Tour de France. And uh, that's why it's beautiful. Since only a select few can climb the high mountains to vie for the overall champion's yellow jersey, a separate competition exists for the world's fastest men on two wheels. 
The points or green jersey competition was introduced in 1953 for the tour's 50th anniversary. The color green was chosen at the request of its first sponsor, a lawnmower manufacturer. Instead of time, these riders, known as sprinters, battle for points in a race within the race. The maximum points are available at each stage finish, but riders also vie for additional points at intermediate sprints along the day's route. These speed demons will attempt to out-pedal, out-maneuver and out-jostle each other to accumulate the most points and earn the right to wear the green jersey in Paris. Germany's Eric Zabel has won a record six green jerseys, most recently in 2001. He now mentors Mark Cavendish, quite possibly the world's fastest rider and a big favourite to win the competition this year. Past winners riding in this year's tour include Oscar Freire, who took the honours last year, and Tor Hushoft, who won in 2005. Whichever fast man takes the points title into Paris, he's sure to leave his competition green with envy. Mark Cavendish has it now, Bob, but he's going to have to earn it if he wants to keep it by Paris. And this is very select company indeed. Hushov, Boone and Freire, the fastest men in the world, coveting that green jersey. When you look at the fact that for the first year in a long time we're seeing the team time trial again, which I think most teams are happy to use, but also the fact that for the first time in decades we're seeing the fact that those time bonuses aren't limited. That is going to be very interesting. And if you look in years past of what advantage Lance Armstrong would have had after the team time trial, had they employed the same rules as this year, it would be it would have been a much more substantial than it was at the time. So that's going to be a very interesting stage to follow. And we could have a completely different uh, uh, composition of the tour at the end of that stage. Try to rate it in a percentage basis for both Saxo Bank and the amount of time they've spent on the front, as well as Columbia. HTC and the amount of work they've had to do to lead Cavendish out not just yesterday but perhaps today how much of a percentage does that take off their top game going into tomorrow well for Saxo Bank they did 100% of the work team wise early in yesterday's stage and today's stage while the rest of the teams did 0% of the work at the front so they're saving between 30 and 35% of their energy throughout two stages and that is a, a huge difference in a stage race when not just just physical power, not just speed, but also recuperation is one of the number one attributes you need to win the Tour de France. So I think that Astana is in the ideal position in comparison to those two teams. 38 kilometers is going to be the distance when we're in Montpellier tomorrow. Is that considered a long team time trial or a short one? I'd say that would be on the short side for a team time trial, although a lot can happen when the guys are going 55, 60 kilometers an hour. The time gaps are exacerbated and exaggerated a little bit more when you're not going quite as fast every kilometer as the fastest men. Columbia HTC out in front yet again, starting to ramp up that train, that yellow and white train. We've talked about the gap now under three minutes, continuing to drop second by second. Astana up there as well as, as you can see, the orange and blue of Rabobank off to the right. But at the moment, it's Columbia HTC completely in control. And at the back of that train, the green jersey of the British man, Mark Cavendish. Hi, it's Fitz with Slap Chop. You're going to be in a great mood all day because you're going to be slapping your troubles away with the Slap Chop. Now, look, here's a potato. One slap, you got big chunks for stews. Who slaps? Home fries in a second. You add a mushroom. The more you do it, the finer it gets. You have to switch any blades. You love salad. You hate making it. Take the stringy celery. Take the carrots. Salad. I love pizza, too, but once in a while, get the veggies in. At least throw it on top of the pizza. This tuna looks boring. Stop having a boring tuna. Stop having a boring life. Here's a hard-boiled egg. One chop. You add the pickle. You add the green onion. And then what you can do, you can mix things together. You can add the ham. You don't have time to make breakfast. You're going to have an exciting life now. Breakfast to go. You're going to love my nuts. Watch this. You can do everything in the cover. It's so easy. One finger. Kids can do it. They're going to charge you a dollar for toppings at the ice cream stores. What about fruit? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful on your ice cream? It's so easy to clean. One, two, and pops open like that, like a butterfly to clean. Now, these other ones that you've seen in the store, you can't clean it. It doesn't open up. Bacteria gets in the food, you don't want bacteria in your food, right guys? Forget about that. Take this slap chop. All right, here's the garlic with the skin. There you go. These skins, the garlic, the onions with the skin. All right, this is making you cry, you're making me cry. Life's hard enough as it is. You don't want to cry anymore. The skins at the bottom, 
Hey, look, so you want a little bit of onions, you don't want to drag out the food processor, the skin comes right off. We're gonna make America skinny again, one slap at a time. When you buy the slap chop, we're gonna give you the grainy for cheese. White cheese, yellow cheese, in the container. Comes with a twister, and watch this. Tacos, fettuccine, linguine, martini, bikini. Comes with two blades, just bang it. Fine and coarse, Parmesan. Comes with a cover, stay sealed. Put it in the fridge, take it out when you need it. The slap chop sells for $19.95, but if you call now, Within the next 20 minutes, because you know we can't do this all day, you're going to get the grainy absolutely free. Just pay for processing. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-899-2506. Call now and you'll get the grainy absolutely free with the Slap Shop when you call ask about our foldable cutting board. That's 1-800-899-2506. 1-800-899-2506. Call now. Speed is about winning races, breaking records, and making history. What do I see at 230 miles an hour? It's tunnel vision, and you have one goal in the checker flag. Speed is my drug. It's The team time trial returns for the first time since 2005 and gone to the rules limiting maximum time losses. That means if you're on a climbing team, you can't coast because over 38 kilometers, the weaker teams could lose minutes. Solid picks tomorrow are going to be Columbia, Garmin, Saxo Bank, and Astana, the formidable talent of Lance Armstrong's team. Visit bicycling.com for exclusive daily tour commentary and analysis from cycling's biggest names, interactive stage maps, and more. Montpellier is where that team time trial is gonna to happen tomorrow. The riders headed to La Grande Motte today for the third time ever in Tour de France history. And Bob, what a show of strength. Columbia High Road, HTC, all nine driving the Peloton. Big chunks of time coming away from the breakaway by the speed of this man, Bart Grapsch, the world time trial champion for Team Columbia on the front of the field right now. Tucked onto his wheel, Bernie Eisel saw George Hincappy going back to the cars to keep all the riders topped off with liquid. He'll go back and get some water bottles, bring them back up to his teammates. As you go down the line I see Mick Rogers in there and Kim Kirchin and uh, Maxime Montfort and Mark Renshaw Tony Martin they'll save themselves for a little bit further as we get closer to the finish line and they will win the speed and there as we see George going back to the cars he's in the white shorts there with the yellow highlights he'll go back to the the field when you go back to the car, you want to get your team car as close as they can do to the back of the field so you don't have to go so far back that you have to make a big effort to get back onto the wheels and the shelter of the Peloton. So George Hincabby, the consummate pro, playing it perfect. How's the order of the team cars decided each day's stage? That's on your top rider on general classification, starting with Fabian Cancellara. Saxo Bank will have position number one. And then it'll descend in order. Contador, he's in second place, so the Astana car will be number two. And that is a huge advantage when you're trying to get through a stage like this, or the mountains especially, when the team manager needs to communicate and deliver supplies to the team. Do you get any extra credit or do you get a bonus if you maintain one of the jerseys like for Mark Cavendish at the moment in green? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> there we see Mark Cavendish. A great day for him. The first time in his career he has donned the green jersey at the Tour de France. All the sprinters will tell you, all the men who go after that classification, that if you don't have the all-around skills to be an overall contender and wear the yellow jersey, this is the second best jersey that you want. The green jersey is the second most prestigious. A lot of attention being paid because the sprinters are such special athletes. We are all always thrilled at the way they can go so fast in the finishing 200 meters of the stage and it's great to see a prize for them that's the most consistent rider that's the man in the green jersey we haven't talked about it a lot today but the men out in the break as we take a look at Sammy Dumoulin from Kofidis in the red, he's part of that four-man breakaway. There actually have been three sprint bonuses today. He won one of them in Moriez. That was at 90.5 kilometers through the day. When the competition gets closer between the top men, Oscar Frere, Tor Hushov, Mark Cavendish, those sprints become very competitive, and uh, you see actually teams doing sort of a mini lead out for those sprints when those points for the green jersey, as we get closer to Paris, those become some very competitive, wild and woolly affairs for the Tour de France. What an incredible piece of architecture that is. The castle of Avignon, which is open to the public. It was rebuilt in 1819. 
situated along the Petite Rhone. Bob, you know this, the Rhone actually splits in two in this segment of the country. Taking a few uh, leisurely days on the Rhone myself when we were racing. <laughs> Not between, now, though. In between races. No, there's no <laughs> time for that anymore, it's oddly enough. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, no rest. But it's a great way to see France every year. We're very lucky to do this. And you can bet that the scenery that these guys are taking in at the moment, they're not remembering much. It's the training rides, isn't it, Bob, when you pay attention to your scenery around you, not when you're out on the road racing. Yeah, that's a very good point you bring up. You start the season in February or March, and uh, we used to do a race from Paris to Nice every year, and then we would have a few weeks in between races, and we would do long training rides through this countryside, and it was a great way to see the country and interact with the local people in uh, sort of a, as a local almost. You're a visitor, but you're a bike racer, which they love in France, and they are totally devoted to all the athletes. It's a huge sport over here, but I never did get a chance to see the country until I started covering it for TV. So uh, great to be here on this side of the camera. Getting shown the time gap, and if you're one of those four, you're starting to realize, well, we've had a valiant day out in front. The French, Bob, I mean, aside from the history, why do you think it is that their culture has embraced cycling as much as they had? Of course, most European countries, whether it's in Spain or Italy, of course, as well, really enjoy cycling. I think the Tour de France has really spread cycling throughout France and as a mode of uh, not just transportation, but also as a leisure activity to stay fit. And, uh, and, and I think that the Tour, Watching these great athletes over the years has just ingrained the cycling culture into the mindset of the French people, and I don't think that's ever going to change. I think the bicycle will always be a big part of life here in France. The blue waters of the Mediterranean await our riders here at the finish line of stage number three. Yesterday out on the road, Kofidis' David Moncoute rolling over some unique graffiti. Here's more on the Nike Chalkbot, another new addition to this year's tour. We built Chalkbot um, together so that people from everywhere can spread messages of hope and uh, cancer survival um, to, a, to a, the entire world at the Tour de France um, on the streets. It's a fully pneumatic robot. We're all friends working on the development of it, so it's literally friends working together, building a really cool thing that millions of people are going to be able to see and experience and interact with. The way that people treat things changes a lot once it's physical. People will feel a lot more connected to that, to the message that they sent. So it's not just a throwaway text, it's not just a, Yo, I'm sorry, right? It, it, it's, you know, now it's somewhere, right? Now it's something. To print a message in sort of memoriam of, of uh, a lost loved one or in uh, honor of someone fighting cancer uh, and, and see that uh, appear on, on the road in a Tour de France that they could never participate in physically, that has the power to, um, to be very comforting, I would say. As a software person, you're just constantly cranking out HTML, you're cranking out images, you know, you've got whatever. It's rare that you end up with something that's um, actually potentially really important to somebody. And so it's just like a really good feeling. Saving with Geico. It's right here. It's easy. It's the money you could be saving with Geico. They gave her a home. It's perfect. But she is not who you think she is. The orphanage you thought she came from has never heard of her. I don't know how long I've waited <laughs> for a family like yours. <laughs> Orphan, rated R. I'll take care of it. When you have to send money fast, why pay more? 
It's just $11 with MoneyGram at Walmart. Anywhere in the U.S. and the money arrives in minutes. Just $11. Save money. Live better. Walmart. Cervelo has one goal, to engineer the fastest bikes on the planet. Cervelo's newest road bike combines the most advanced features from the entire product lineup, including aerodynamic attributes from the time trial bikes, the comfortable ride of the Paris-Roubaix winning frames, plus improved power transfer and an ultralight layup, making its Grand Tour debut, the Cervelo S3. Living with foot pain? Finally, the first ever pain relieving cream for sore, achy feet from Gold Bond. Maximum Strength Medicine penetrates deep to stop foot pain in its tracks. New Gold Bond Pain Relieving Foot Cream. Finally, fast relief for painful feet. With arthritis, standing all day is hard on my knees. So I use new capsaicin quick relief gel with purified capsaicin. Capsaicin starts working on contact and works at the nerve level, blocking pain signals for hours. New capsaicin takes the pain out of arthritis. There's more excitement coming to Blackhawk. Are you ready for Blackhawk's 24-hour fun? Blackhawk, bet up to $100. Are you ready for the thrill of craps and roulette? Same Blackhawk, more ways to win. Now playing. Welcome back to our coverage on Versus here of the Tour de France in HD. Another look at the Castle of Avignon. Great racing out on the road. They have really upped the pace in these final few kilometers. And we go inside the Columbia HGC team car with Brian Holm at the moment, one of their team directors. Uh, Mark, you can be six or seven through the last it's, corner with 800 meter. It's headwind, and Eric said we have to start later than, than yesterday. Okay. It's going to be long otherwise. And if possible, stay on the right-hand side for the sprint. That covers him. The right side. If possible, on the right side, that's the best okay. then. Bottles. Anybody else have finished bottles? Okay. That's it. Take a bottle. Speaking with George Hincappy, Rolf Aldag in the car as well. Very specific instructions, Bob, as to what Columbia HTC needs to do. Wind coming from the left, so you want to stay to the right. And this peloton is getting very strung out. Gaps are starting to open up. The Mistral winds blowing straight off of the Mediterranean. And this is what you can see in the front, a big concerted effort by Team Columbia. They had started to lead out, but they thought maybe there's a chance that we open up a gap and we start to get some advantage over the riders behind us. If they don't realize the danger right now, they could be losing serious amounts of time. Cancellar there Look at in that. the yellow jersey. They've got the gap, Bob. Sorry to interrupt, but that's exactly Exactly what you talked about they would try to do and look how quickly the gap goes and you can see the riders lined up in the gutter and they're trying to struggle back to this front group but when you have a team of nine men this strong that go to the front in a concerted effort and they sense that there's a strong crosswind blowing there's Cancellar looking back for some teammates I don't think there's another Saxo Bank rider there so now you can see what kind of damage can be done in a crosswind it's up to the peloton the remaining peloton to try to chase them down it basically is all of Columbia HTC Cancellar did a great job to go with them. A couple Milram guys. Linus Gerdeman, it looks like, is there. And already, look how quickly they've closed the gap. Those are the four men who had been out in front all day long. But because of the wind, the driving Columbia team catches them right there. Wow, what an acceleration. They took two minutes out of the breakaway in about three kilometers. There's Team Columbia, the juggernaut. I think I saw Lance Armstrong in that front group, as well as Alberto Contador. And Contador. Now you can see the desperation in the chase. And all the riders in this group need to get back across to the front, or they could be losing the Tour de France right now. A perfect example of the attentiveness of Lance Armstrong. Saw what was developing his good friend George Hincapie on a different team this year, but he probably knows his tactics pretty well. Lance in front with one other teammate. Contador not in that group. for So for American cycling fans, a chance for perhaps Lance Armstrong to close that gap and to muddy the waters a little bit more, Bob, as to who the team leader will be in the next few days. This is Kuhn de Court. He was in the breakaway. He was caught very quickly. He did attack that breakaway, got about a 50-meter gap before Team Columbia shut it down. Also, it looks like Linus Gerdemann from the Milran squad. He has the yellow sho shoes and the blue jerseys there. 
there, but a very small group at the front. This is a very powerful breakaway, and they're going to have to get organized behind and do a huge chase. Here's Saxo Bank. They have the Schleck brothers that are still GC threats. They need to come through, and Cadell Evans needs his whole team to get front to the front. There is Frank Schleck in the red, white, and blue jersey. Kurt Osla Arvison. There's the Liquid Gas Riders. They are desperately chasing flat out, and there is Cadell Evans' teammates trying to get to the front and limit some of this damage. We see on the left, Alberto Contador, number 21. He's hoping that everyone helps him get closer to his teammates. But how does Saxo Bank play these cards now? Cancellara is in that break, is in the front. But as you mentioned, the overall contenders need to limit the time gap. Well, this is a very, very strange situation. Contador has two or three teammates in the front. He does not want to be seen chasing the front group, who ha which has Lance Armstrong, if I'm not mistaken, in that front group. And so that's going to be a very... Very interesting to see how that plays out tactically. Milram moving a little bit, working there. The Kofidis rider as well. But it was definitely Columbia HTC who put the hammer down when the road turned. There's George Hincapie coming through, doing his turn on the front. Looks like Peter Velitz, the teammate in blue of Milram. There's Sammy Dumoulin. Good riding to get back into that group as they were accelerating. Cancellara. He's just going to have a free ride to the finish line now. Heads up riding by the man in the black jersey. That is Lance Armstrong. He has made the front group, and that will give him a big advantage on the stages to come. He can sit in here now. He doesn't have to worry about the chase behind. Very attentive riding. This is how you win or lose big races like the Tour. About 30 riders in that front group as they make the bend to the right. We'll get a great visual of how far back the chasers are, and they continue to put distance into them. Look at this time gap, Bob, continuing to grow. Continuing to go up, and that's because of the Team High Road Columbia riders. They have uh, sensed a moment where they could get a big advantage. I think that Mark Cavendish might be the only sprinter to make that juncture. Looks as though Garmin Slipstream now trying to get to the front as well to work. Robobank also putting in big pulls at the front. They will continue to take these turns at the front as long as they have enough strength to do that. But right now, it is a race between the Peloton and Team Columbia. And let's see how committed Team Columbia is going to be. If they hesitate for a minute with 25 kilometers below the finish, the Peloton will be able to come back. But they're going to have to put some more riders on the front of the chase in the Peloton to limit this loss right here. And you can see from that flag, that yellow flag on the left-hand side of your screen, excuse me, the right-hand side of your screen, how hard the wind is blowing straight at the side of the racer so the shelter doesn't come from the front the shelter comes from the side and when you go into the gutter there you run out of road and so that's when the gaps open up being able to ride an echelon like that with pinpoint accuracy comes with years and years of development all these riders undoubtedly have that coming in but all it takes is one little slip up which happened a few moments ago to allow a group to drive and to push forward like columbia htc did and now they are just scrambling behind. We're taking a look at Contador right there. 21, he's trying to say, come on, guys, we need to get this moving as best we can. Let's take a moment to remind you, the Cadillac Ride of Your Life sweepstakes. Don't forget to log on to versus.com slash ride of your life every day during the tour. Chance to win a trip for two to the 2010 Tour de France and a Cervelo S2 bicycle. You can also win a couple jerseys, both yellow and polka dot, like we use in the Cadillac performance predictions. Today's code word is CTS. And with the acceleration of a CTS caddy, that's what these guys are going about at the moment. Perhaps the CTS V there on display by the Team <laughs> Columbia riders. Uh, the supercharged V8 thundering down the highway right now. I love to see a win battle in the Tour de France. The climbers not very good at that. The classic specialists, the big one-day races of the spring, they are experts at that. Here we go through a roundabout. That'll give this group of 27 men a little bit of an advantage. They can sweep right through that at Mach 7 and get back up to speed immediately. If the wind shifts a little bit, it will neutralize the advantage that they have. But you can still see with any flag, it's really blowing hard. So this is a great race. We thought it would be boring, but it's come explosively to life right now in the closing kilometers of this stage. Brian Holm and Rolf Aldag remember as we looked inside the Columbia car, he was telling George Hincapie to be attentive to the win and to actually go later than yesterday because in the finishing straight which is almost three quarters of a kilometer long it's going to be very difficult to fight that win and he said you're going to you're going to tire yourself out if you don't go late enough and
And here is Silence Lotto, perhaps realizing that Cadell Evans in no way, shape, or form can lose more time today. Well, you can see the riders now really desperate to get this gap closed down. Silence Lotto at the front, still some of the Saxo Bank riders. That's a desperate situation for Andy Schleck watching Lance Armstrong disappear up the road. But just think of what's going through the mind right now of Alberto Contador. His teammates are not really at liberty to chase, so he has to sit there and hope that other teams, perhaps not as strong as Astana, can come to the front and close that gap. The Belgian National Championship jersey of Tom Bonin just leaving our picture at the top there, the, the gold, red, and black. But the melee that has now taken place, compliments of Colombia, the carnage is behind them. You can see the chasing group, though, in the back, roughly 25 seconds behind with that long lens. It looks closer than it really is, but as you mentioned, Bob, Columbia's going to need a little bit of help. It's going to be absolutely devastating for them to push this pace for the final 20K. And that's a great man to have in a situation like this. Big George Hincapie. You saw him just go through your screen in the middle of the other two riders. Akashir, it looks like, from Skill Shimano on the just in front of Peter Vellets. Great to see four riders from Skill Shimano making this very competitive junction in the bike race. Great riding by the new team on the block. At least four skill Shimano riders. And look, now guys are starting to sit on, so not as much cooperation perhaps in the breakaway as previously. Not as much urgency, but they did a great job as they caught the group. That's the main peloton out in front with the group of 30, Columbia. Hamels looks toward home. The pitch. He walks him. Chase one outside. Who are you? Oh, Dad. Oh, no. Wearing the same cap the pros wear doesn't mean you're one. New Era. Make the majors or buy one at the store. Well, I was shopping for a new car. Which one's me? A cool convertible or an SUV? Too bad I didn't know my credit was whack because now I'm driving off the lot in a used subcompact. F-R-E-E, -E, that spells free. Creditreport.com, baby. Saw their ads on my TV. Thought about going but was too lazy. Now instead of looking fly and rolling fat, my legs are sticking to the vinyl and my posse's getting laughed at. F-R-E-E, -E, that spells free. Creditreport.com, baby. Offer applies with enrollment and triple advantage. My Impreza has a Subaru Boxer engine. It's perfectly balanced for performance and handling. I love that engine. And I love anyone else who loves a Subaru engine, too. Impreza love knows no bounds. Love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Lease a Subaru Impreza for $179 per month with only $12.99 to its signing. Before the start of the race, I can feel my heartbeat in my hands, in my throat, in my eyes, everywhere. Fear and the stress, it makes me better. What do I see at 230 miles an hour? It's tunnel vision, and you have one goal, the checker flag. Speed is about winning races, breaking records, and making history. Speed is my drug. Lowe's has a huge selection of brand name appliances. Huge. KitchenAid, Maytag, Electrolux, Whirlpool, Frigidaire, Samsung, Bosch, GE. What was that fourth one? Whirlpool. Sixth one? Samsung. Not bad. Come to Lowe's first for appliances. Twelve summers of boat hauling. Six minutes to soccer practice. 63 miles of commuting daily. For any extreme, from the road to the racetrack, nothing beats Mobile One, the official motor oil of NASCAR, and the choice of over half of all NASCAR teams. So put some NASCAR in your car with the one, Mobile One. Trish was relaxing on her Friday commute when she realized she forgot to pick up a movie. She needed to get to a video store fast, or all the good DVDs would be gone. Take the drama out of renting. Netflix, unlimited movies for $8.99 a month. Well, Columbia having done their job, it looks like that's Bernard Eisel 
either Isil or Burt Grafs. They were the ones that instigated that break. Their work for the day is done, Bob, but the guys out in front, and you can't say enough, can you, about Skill Shimano, one of them, Fumiko Beppu, who used to be Lance Armstrong's teammate on Discovery. Fumiyuki Beppu making the juncture, putting his men on the front. This would be a great result for them. They only have a couple of guys to sprint against. I think we've seen Tor Hushov also in this breakaway. I think Cancellaro will be happy that he made it, but you saw him go across that traffic island. He must have sensed that something was about to happen, and Team Columbia put the hammer down in the gutter, and that is when the Tour de France comes to life. Looked like a boring almost stage until the finale, until the final sprint, but it's anything but that. This is as exciting as a mountain stage right now, so desperate moments. The chase behind, they're starting to slip away. 28 men in the front. Mick Rogers coming to the front. World time trial champion three times. And you know when he goes solo into the wind, he's going very fast indeed. This has been a great maneuver on the team. Columbia's part, very strong squad. Mark Cavendish was just getting into position to start his defense of his green jersey and try to win another stage. And then they sense that there's a moment now. We got an advantage. If we put the hammer down right now, we can do something special in the tour. Let's go through exactly who was in that group for Cervello, Hushov, and Ralston, for Astana, Armstrong, Popovich, and Zubeldia. Saxo Bank, you mentioned Cancellara. Yuskatel has Perez still in there. Columbia, pretty much everybody. Cavendish, Isol, Martin, Renshaw, Rogers, Grafs, Kirk, and Montfort. And of course, big George Hincabby. Kofidis has Auger, Dumoulin, and Cairn. Quick step with Pinot, Agru Tubel, Bouet, Milram, Gerdeman, and Wegman. And Skill Shimano, those four or five. Lemoyne, Beppu, Dacoutes, Gelsch, Hivert, and Houpon. And this is what's going on in the peloton. No picnic back here either. Not a lot of sitting on. And you can see the flag still howling to the right of the hand side. And so when the 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 momentum goes across to the right hand side of the road, there's almost no shelter from the wind. So that's why the that's why the echelons form and the riders fan out to the left. The peloton doing a good job now of moving to the left. If a team started to get really fatigued and moved it over to the right, there would be no shelter. And then you would have another another reorganization of the echelon. So Team Columbia may be turning the gas off a little bit. And uh, if they don't feel like they can explode the field, they're going to ease up a little bit and reorganize the lead out for Mark Cavendish. But if these two groups come together, then anything could happen in the finale. <laughs> and it will be anybody's bike race in this whole field. The maximum advantage of the group in front, which numbers 28, was 30 seconds. It actually has now dropped to 22 seconds. So the peloton making inroads slowly but surely into the group in front. And you can bet on these long straightaways when they have that visual, the carrot in front, they can see it. And that's a great example right there. Some of the riders swinging wide to the left, they'll come back together. But up in front, you can see at the top of your screen, those are the 28 men who are trying to stay away. I'll tell you, Alberto Contador will be very lucky and count himself very fortunate indeed if these two groups do come together. This 30 seconds, if the riders behind decide to turn off the gas, could turn into two minutes by the finish line, and that would be devastating for Contador's chances at the Tour. Starting to fragment a bit, that lead group. You can see all the camera, the safety cars, the camera motorcycles all up there, the peloton en masse starting to form that echelon again at the top of the screen. They go, or I should say, at the top of the peloton on the left-hand side, playing the wind down to the right. The riders on the top of your screen, they're still hugging the gutter pretty well, still going pretty hard to the gutter. And uh, Popovich being sent to the front now of the breakaway to do some work. Some of the Kofidis riders asked to be in doing some work, and George Hincapie has never hesitated. He realizes that this is a great moment to further their agenda at the Tour, which is stage wins for Mark Cavendish and perhaps some overall for Mick Rogers. There's Popo looking back to see what the time is and maybe get a signal from Lance Armstrong. Should I, start, should I keep working or should I just wait and see what happens for a, new, a few more kilometers? If they get within 10 kilometers from the finish line and they still have 20, 24 seconds and the people in the, in the, the riders chasing in the peloton turn off the gas well then you're going to see a pretty big time gap at the end it looks like they're extending it a little bit 24 seconds is the is the gap and here's the riders once there's more riders pulling through than are sitting on in this group you have a very good chance to stay away popo right there starting to do some work as well in second position Astana moving to the front. Interesting to see what's going on at the moment with them. That's Imar Zubeldia. 
on the front at the moment. 26 seconds now, the advantage for the men out in front. That group has dropped to 27 riders. George Hincappy takes a pull again, but he backs off. Zubeldia and Popovich. Columbia, they have been the instigating force throughout the past few days on the roads, the flat stages. It happened again today. This time, the weather had something to do with it as well. Here in La Grande Motte, the crowd has been cheering for hours. Very soon, we'll see a finish. When the light comes on, just come in. Yeah. Boys. This week, Manny Moe and Jack bring you the Pet Boys Tire Celebration. Buy one tire for as low as $24.99. Buy any two tires, get a free oil change. Buy any three tires and get the fourth tire free. Through Sunday, get a Pennzoil do-it-yourself oil change, just $9.99. When the light comes on, just come in. Pet Boys does everything for less. Call 1-800-PET-BOYS or visit PetBoys.com. There is a school like no other school in the world. Avionics in the morning. Training in the afternoon, computer programming in the evening, and along the way, Leadership 101. And on the day that your studies here draw to an end, and the commander looks you in the eye and salutes you, it will be with the knowledge that he is only the first of many who will do so. There's strong, and there's Army strong. To see strength like no other, go to GoArmy.com. gets you out running, walking, or doing what you really love to do. You have your own motivations for being out there. Enjoy every second. The Boulder Running Company has what you need to make your experience even better. From free video gait analysis, to a huge casual shoe selection, to apparel and accessories. The Boulder Running Company. Boulder, Denver, Colorado Springs, and online at boulderrunningcompany.com. Living with foot pain? Finally, the first ever pain relieving cream for sore, achy feet from Gold Bond. Maximum Strength Medicine penetrates deep to stop foot pain in its tracks. New Gold Bond Pain Relieving Foot Cream. Finally, fast relief for painful feet. With Gold Bond Medicated Powder, you've got the power of fast, lasting relief from wetness, irritation, and itch. And that Gold Bond Cooling Rush says it's working like ordinary powders can't. Look for the healing seal Gold Bond Medicated. The powder with the power. Here in the south of France, we expected some fireworks at the finish, but you can create your own fireworks online, Versus.com. Sign up for the Versus Fantasy Cycling Challenge. It's completely free to play. You get to pick your own team. Exclusive prizes from the teams of Garmin, Slipstream, Astana, and Columbia HTC. You can create your own league online. Go to Versus.com to participate. I don't think if you were putting together a super team, you could do any better at the moment, Bob, than C Columbia HTC. These guys have been absolutely dominant the past two days. Well, when you see a rider like Mick Rogers, a rider like George Hincap, you look at their record of wins, they are the very best in the business. And when you have a whole team of riders like that, you know you have a guy, Mark Cavendish, that can win stages. But it's more than that. It's the ability to recognize a moment when you can exploit an advantage. And that's what they're doing today. Popovich making the juncture along with Zubeldi and Lance Armstrong. Very difficult situation for Alberto Contador and also Team Astana. He has team... Uh, Contador has teammates in the second group chasing, but it would be very tough for anybody, a guy like Gregory Ross, to go to the front and do some tempo and cooperate in the chase of Lance Armstrong. I think that would be worse than is it if Astana would allow to see what would happen, let the other teams do the chasing, and then once we get into the mountains, that will be neutralized a little bit because those don't have any crosswind battles. But today, we are being treated to a part of cycling we don't get to often see in the Tour de France, and that's when the crosswinds blow 10 kilometers before the finish line, just six miles, and that gap is not coming down at all. And here is the chase. We'll get a great time check here after they go into the banner, but at the dinner table tonight, Bob, how does Johan Brunil explain to Alberto Contador that he put Popovich and Zubeldi on the front? 
Um, I think he would explain it by saying he wanted to put pressure on perhaps Cadell Evans' team or some of the other men that have missed this. Denny Menchaw's team has missed it entirely, so Rabobank has been doing a lot of the work. So you're in a great position if you're Johan Brunil, and uh, if you have two leaders and both of them miss this kind of a breakaway, well, the, the team has to come to the front, and it's all hands on deck with a big chase. But if you have one leader go with them, then the second leader can sit in the field and take a little bit of a breather and not worry about it too much. But psychologically, that's got to hurt a little bit. The gap is now officially 32 seconds at the 10-kilometer mark, so the men in front are doing the proper work and getting the job done, increasing their lead, and it dropped to 22 seconds. And now we see Big George once again breaking the win for everyone, taking his turn. Columbia HTC proving that they can put the hammer down as well, if not better than anyone. Well, this is a great hit squad at the front. There's Zubeldia, Mick Rogers, George Hincapie, Tony Martin, and Yaroslav Popovich, and chasing Big Jens Voigt there at the front, trying to get Andy Schleck back into the frame, some of the Garmin riders, and all of the men that are capable of, of the silence team of Cadell Evans has been asked to go to the front. The problem for them, not the strongest team perhaps in the tour. They only have a couple of guys that can still go to the front, go way down the field, and there you see, just going over your screen, is uh, Alberto Contador. So he's going to wait and see and just hope that the other teams have enough strength to catch this group. Speaking of strength, these guys are going so fast. How much work is it taking just to hang on to this group, let alone take a turn at the front? Well, I think some of the riders initially, when the speed was incredibly high, probably had a very tough time sitting on the wheels. Now you can take a breath and get a little bit of a break, and I think there'll be some fresh legs from this group, including Cancelar, including Tor Hushov, and especially Mark Cavendish that hasn't done anything for the sprint, but that's a very good point you bring up. When you're desperately hanging onto the wheel in front of you, there's no way you can do any work. Columbia HTC out in front as it's been almost all day long. We don't want to have to leave, but we've got to pay some bills. We'll be back after this with the exciting conclusion of stage number three. It all blew up on the road. Who's going to be the victor? Yeah, you'll get used to it. The longer you keep your high mileage car, the more it pays you back. Get Castrol GTX High Mileage. It helps engines last longer by fighting the main causes of engine failure. I think a dime went on my nose. Yeah, it happens. Don't change your car, change your oil to Castrol GTX High Mileage. It's more than just oil. It's liquid engineering. Hey, I want to let you know I'm going to be off on Monday. I never heard of Chinchilli Day. Sure you have. It's called the Revolution de Chinchilla. It was when the pet chinchillas of a tiny Pueblo town rose up against the people. For three bloody days, the fighting continued. Until finally, the last of the chinchillas was gone. And how do you celebrate? Three days in Vegas. It's a cultural obligation. Excuse me, would you eat 12 teaspoons of sugar? What? That's what's in your energy drink. Oh, nasty. Not only sugar, but 200 calories per can. Look, all I want is energy. Then try 5-Hour Energy. It has zero sugar and only four calories. It's kind of small, isn't it? So it takes seconds to drink, and boom, you get the energy boost you want without the crash or jitters. No crash, huh? Still want that energy drink? No, thanks. Take the 5-Hour Energy. 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now. No crash later. simplicity <laughs> and the idea that complex problems can be solved in a simple way. We believe in firsts 
and in lifestyles that last. We believe in the power of giving back and never giving up. We believe in bikes. The Peloton, a much larger mass. You would think they should be able to close the gap on the 27 out in front, but those 27 engines who are at the front of the race, Bob, are the best in the business, and they continue to increase their lead. Now it's over 35 seconds. The lead going up a little bit now. We're inside of 10 kilometers. Every time you see a flag on the side of the road, you can see how strong the wind is still howling. That's going to continue throughout the stage and even tomorrow. Look at George Hincapie. This is maximum effort to get maximum results. They know if they don't get caught, Cavendish wins this stage. Perhaps Tor Hushov has a chance, but generally speaking, Cavendish, and it'll be a two-man sprint, basically. Yeah. All the riders doing everything they can to keep the breakaway. The main beneficiary of that will be Lance Armstrong, and that is an unbelievable move that he put in to get into this front group. Two of Lance's lieutenants been doing a lot of work lately. Imard Zubeldia, there you see Yaroslav Popovich with the all-black glasses. The Astana kit and the yellow glasses now in fourth position. That's Zubeldia. Mick Rogers also in the mix at the front, as is George Hincapie. There you see Michael Rogers. Michael Rogers in the white glasses and the white shoes. I think that's Tony Martin in the yellow shoes for Team Columbia. And they are so fast, so quick, so strong that they're being able to hold off the whole peloton. But honestly, very few men still in the front doing the tempo in the chase group. And you got to wonder about a guy like Carlos Sastre. What is he thinking about? And Cadell Evans and Alberto Contador, Andy Schleck, especially Denny Menchov. And they're wondering, maybe I have missed out. And here is Contador. Doesn't seem to be too happy at the moment. And uh, he'll just have to wait see what happens and that uh, he's second place to start the day but if this stays the way it is till the finish line he's going to tumble down the leaderboard quite a bit the gap now at 38 seconds so the job of the 27 they're doing it correctly they're continuing to increase their lead very soon the peloton's going to realize that their work is all in vain they've got to start thinking about stages either tomorrow or further on with approximately 5K to go, you can see the beaches of La Grande Malte. We have made it to their destination. A little bit over three and a half miles to come before we declare a stage winner. But as Bob just mentioned, there are really only true, two true sprinters left in that front group. Mark Cavendish, Tor Hushov. And I'm kicking myself. I picked Tor yesterday. Well, uh, <laughs> that's the way it goes. <laughs> that is the way it goes. But you've got Cav today. It could be a great day for Bob Roll and Team America in the colonial clash of our picks. But more specifically, a great day, as we've hinted at, for Lance Armstrong. American cycling fans are going to go ballistic around the world because Lance is going to move up on general classification. Fabian Cancellara is going to keep his yellow jersey, barring an accident at this part. A great job of attentiveness by him to stay in that front group. I'm a little bit surprised that Cancellara has no Saxo Banks teammates with him in the front. He's very astute at, at that team. is one of the best in the win battles, but they have missed out today, except Cancellara. Today certainly did not develop the way we expected. We thought all the fireworks were going to be saved for the final few kilometers, but that is not what happened. So, for the great finish, let's send it to Phil Liggett and Paul Sherwin. At 4.7 kilometers, the clock is still counting at the five kilometer banner for the chase here, and it's going to be about 33, 34 seconds. But Paul Astana, with three men in the breakaway, are still going to head up the team race in the lead tonight because you work out the team by adding together the best three riders' finishing times of the day. I think what's more important to them is the fact that they're moving Lance Armstrong up in the overall classification, but really the most sensible move was the move done by Team Columbia High Road. They really did bring a coup on here this afternoon. They're not going to slow down either because they now realize they've got to keep this pressure on all the way to the finish. I sincerely believe as we go inside of four kilometers to go that the peloton were going to react violently and pull these men back. It's just an oh. indication of the fact that there's eight riders from one team in this 
breakaway, and I think that adds to the success. We are four minutes from the finishing line in La Grande Motte. It's a headwind, a long straight up to the finish, but there's no way in that four minutes can the field behind. There's Tom Bonin in the black, yellow, and red jersey, champion of Belgium. Another day he's missed out in the sprint here because he missed out in the split, and more importantly, big riders missed out in the split. Sastra, Contador, Cadell Evans all missed a move. The handing time to Lance Armstrong, to Michael Rogers, the important riders, and to Kim Kirkham particularly. And look at the back now. They're just being torn to shreds by the wind. They're at four kilometres. We're going to have five bunches finished today. Well, that's the important thing you have to remember. I've said it so many times. A flat stage can always be a dangerous stage because you don't have to go uphill to split a field. If you get a very strong crosswind, it can split the field to pieces. And that's what's happened here this afternoon. We have split it up in the crosswinds. That's why the riders uh, were riding at the front end of the main field, taking lots of risks to make sure that they were in the first 15 or 20 positions. Alberto Contador has been caught out, but he's been caught out by his own teammate, Lance Armstrong. But let's not forget, Phil, the Tour de France is three weeks long. But this is oh, the yes. first psychological battle, and things can completely and utterly change once we get into the mountains. But this has been fun to watch. Contador is a great mountain climber, but maybe he lacks a little bit of experience, a little bit of expertise to ride these crosswinds. It's not his favorite style of bike racing, but those riders who can ride them know you can gain time. He was squeezing out seconds in a race that's still got two and a half plus weeks to go, but you never know. Remember Greg LeMond and Laurent Fignon? Greg LeMond won by eight seconds, and these boys at the moment have got themselves 34. 34 seconds is what the clock will stop at if we were to stop the race right now, but we've still got a couple of kilometers to go to the finish. Still, everybody seems to be participating in the pacemaking at the front end of the pack. Mark Cavendish now is starting to get nervous. He realizes he has to finish off after the job of work that's been done by his team, Team Columbia, High Road, HT, HTC. They've done a great job of work for him, but he's got the pressure on his shoulders to make sure he finishes it off. And don't forget, there is a still a very good sprint in this group, Tor Hussoff, the God of Thunder, is there, and he will be hoping to take advantage of a mistake by Mark Cavendish. Well, in theory, it's only Hussoff who can even approach the speed of Mark Cavendish, but we've had two races for the last 20k, and these guys are going to be at the full limit of their effort right now. Whether Mark can lift it again, and he's got to come late to the line because he'll put his nose out, the wind is going to come from the left of the road, and on his head as he makes the line, he's got to get it right. Don't discount Fabian Cancellara. He's got yeah, in this race. He's had an easy ride. Right. He's right. a strong bike rider. And if it's a sprint that goes out from a very long way, he could be the man to create the big surprise here this afternoon. Let's not forget the last time he was leading the Tour de France in the yellow jersey on the road into Compiègne. He came around a zigzag corner, and all of a sudden, the yellow jersey bolted out of a bunch sprint to get himself a great stage victory. He doesn't have to win, of course, to keep his maillot jaune tonight. He just needs to finish with these riders. He'll be given the same time. No time bonuses given in the race this year. So he finishes with the riders. He keeps his maillot jaune. But second tonight, I think, will be Tony Martin. Third tonight, I think, will be Lance Armstrong. Tomorrow, it's the team time trial. Then what will happen? It looks like we're in one kilometre to go now. Skill Shimano won't go down without a fight as well. Cavendish has moved himself right up now he's not got a lot of riders here and there's an attack on right on the far side of the road and i think that'll be probably christoph colonel stefan Auger has made the move as they try to bridge the gap here to the one skill shimano this is going to be a tough one mark renshaw you've got to do something special here where are you mark i'm right behind you as they come up towards the finish he's got to hold him late and then launch the attack because the headwind will spoil the fun Mark has got to do something very special here and stay there as long as possible because Cholig is getting up on his back wheel as well here. And Tor Hushov is locked in onto the back of the missile. I think that Cavendish knows it. Now he's got to go up the left-hand side. Tor Hushov, can he use his massive strength to challenge Renshaw on the, the mark uh, Cavendish? It's going to be close, but I think Cav has done it. Yes, he's done it on the telephone. Mark. Cavendish is unbelievable and Tor Hushok got second two out of two another 35 points on the green jersey competition it's already looking pretty good it's looking extremely good that was uh, a hand 
book victory for Mark Cavendish there, Phil, as he came up to the line. But this is what's more important, I think, to everybody else. The time gap that the clock is going to stop at here as they try to make sure the clock doesn't lose too much for these men in the main field. There's Cadell Evans riding at the front end of the peloton. The clock has still yet to stop for the main field as it looks like Romo Felu is coming up to get himself uh, probably a 29th or 30th place. Stops the clock Ooh. at 39 seconds. Huge loss on a day like this. It really is. It's going to make the team time trial a battle for Yellow now tomorrow for Lance Armstrong, for Tony Martin or will Fabian Cancellara keep it? Armstrong was in that group. He's gained 39 seconds. He was 40 seconds behind Cancellara at the start of the day. Of course, he still is 40 seconds behind Cancellara, but he's recouped all his time from the rise between 10th and 3rd overall in the race. It's a huge result. Very astute riding this afternoon by the man who started the day in the yellow jersey, Fabian Cancellara, but maybe more astute, the performance of Lance Armstrong, Phil, at 37 years of age, coming back to yeah. the sport after four years away from the Tour de France and getting himself into a very, very tactical manoeuvre. What a great performance by him. Let's have a quick look again, though, at the sprint by Mark Cavendish. Admirably led up to the line there by Mark Renshaw. Renshaw really had to dig deep here because Team Columbia High Road had done an awful lot of work on the run in towards the finish. Cavendish looking over his shoulders. He knows that Tor Hushoft is a man who's on his wheel there. Hushoff comes alongside, gets up to his pedals, but you know Mark, Mark Cavendish here has got the acceleration and he kicks a second time there to open up the gap to a full bicycle length to say, I'm telephoning this victory home. Thank you very much. And Hushoff's a really nice guy. First to congratulate him. As we look down now on La Grande Motte, uh, let's have a look provisionally. Uh, there's the top 10. Armstrong didn't bother to sprint, but he's got the same time. Look at that. Samuel Dumoulin still finished in fourth place today. So he was the one that made the jump. I just didn't think it was possible he would have had the legs. Cancellara got six, so he stayed safe and stays in yellow. And the top 10 completed there by Linus Gerdeman, who we actually saw try to make his move. Incredible result, and Lance Armstrong has still shown the younger guys how to ride a stage of the tour. Well, there we are. We're going to take a quick break, allow Phil Ligger to get his breath back, and then we will go to the prizes, and we'll also find out where everybody sits overall tonight. It's going to be extremely interesting. There's the celebrations in Team Columbia's car. Whether you're powering down the asphalt in a Cervelo S2 or a Cadillac CTS Sport Wagon, you're sure to get that rush. Now imagine the rush you could feel at the final stage of the Tour de France with the Cadillac Ride of Your Life sweepstakes. Just watch the Tour de France on Versus and look for the on-screen code. Then log on to Versus.com slash Ride of Your Life to enter. You could win a Cervelo S2 and a VIP trip to Paris to watch the 2010 Tour. The Cadillac Ride of Your Life sweepstakes and watch the Tour de France right here on Versus. At TireRack.com, we don't just sell tires, we test them. On our test track and on real-world roads. And we stock nearly a million tires. That's the largest selection anywhere. And TireRack delivers to you or thousands of our independent recommended installers, usually in just two business days. Right now, when you buy a set of four select BF Goodrich tires, get a $50 Visa prepaid card. For details, go to TireRack.com slash TV. TireRack.com. Research. Buy. Deliver. Install. Kelly Saunders Nature Valley. The place that inspires her to go faster. And slower. Elk Mountains, Colorado. Where's yours? 100% natural Nature Valley granola bars. The taste nature Itchy dry skin, get the quick fix. Sunburn itch, get the lasting fix. New Gold Bond Anti-Itch Lotion gives fast, lasting relief with two proven itch fighters and healing moisturizers. Got an itch? Gold Bond Anti-Itch Lotion, the quick fix for almost every itch. With Gold Bond Medicated Powder, you've got the power of fast, lasting relief from wetness, irritation, and itch. And that Gold Bond Cooling Rush says it's working like ordinary powders can't. Look for the healing seal, Gold Bond Medicated, the powder with the power. At First Bank, we do not clone nor endorse the cloning of U.S. currency. Would be against international law and a breach of banking ethics. The $50 you receive upon opening a free checking account is real money and has not been duplicated in a covert genetics laboratory. So at your earliest convenience, 
Go to First Bank or visit us online and get $50 that has never been cloned. in a family with my dad winning the Indy 500, you take some heat. There's really no sport like it. We're inches apart, wheel to wheel, and one touch, and you're gone. It's a crazy lifestyle. That's how it goes. It's gotta be a new race. Another display of dominance from Mark Cavendish, phoning it in, Bob, after the win today. I think he could not be blamed for phoning it in. His team did such a great job. They eliminated every other sprinter in the race before the sprint began. Only Torhushov could hang on the wheels of the Team High Road Riders and Cavendish delivering the goods. Beautiful day of racing. Back-to-back -back celebrations for the Englishman. He now has six career Tour de France stage wins. Six wins, closing in on the all-time British record of eight stage Stage wins, and there's your results of the stage. Hushov second, Lemoine third, Dumoulin, Jerome Pinot rounding out the top five. After the race and the presentations, Frank Andreu caught up with the champ. Mark, your sixth Tour de France win. This time, a little bit different because you made the split. A little bit different feelings for you winning this race? Yeah, you know, today wasn't a full on one sprint. I was just taking that win on behalf of the team, you know, and uh, they did so much work at the finish there. It was a uh, it was incredible, you know, it, it pays off. We were the only sprint team that was willing to take on at the end. Fair play, Saxon Bank Road all day, so, you know, it's it's a consolation that that Fabian was in the group with us because, uh, you know, they did a lot of riding today and then uh, yeah, we were able to split it and the other teams who didn't want to ride had to ride anyway, but we were riding for the win, they were riding just to stay in the race, so, so it was pretty sweet for us. A little bit of a gamble that paid off because you were able to split yourselves away, but a lot of work presented out there on the road. What about tomorrow for the team time trial? That should be okay. Like I said, the other teams had to ride anyway. It's just we were riding for the win. As usual, we were the one that took it on, and it paid dividends. You know, there's other teams, they ride kind of like junior races. And uh, Does it get frustrating that it seems to always fall on your shoulders? Absolutely, but, you know, when we win, it makes it worthwhile. You know, when, so if riders, if racers want to race like juniors, then they'll get results like juniors. Thank you. Incredibly strong words for Mark Cavendish. A lot of people expected that win from him today, Bob, but the way it came about, that really wasn't part of the script. No, most definitely. That was a very unique stage. We almost never see the crosswinds blow the race apart like it did. Mark Cavendish and his teammates taking maximum advantage. Maybe a little bit of a stretch to call the other men in the Tour de France junior racers, but Mark Cavendish unstoppable so far in the sprints. It's one of the things that has made him such a polarizing figure, isn't it? Mark Cavendish is always going to speak his mind. Mark Cavendish is a man that will speak his mind no matter where the chips fall. He's going to let them fly. It's great to hear him talk. He, when he says he's the fastest man in the world, he says, I'm not exaggerating. That's just the truth of the matter. Well, let's right now run you through the Cadillac performance highlights of stage number three. We knew it was going to be a fast run into the finish. When they hit the flats, though, Columbia would be the team that would move to the front, and they would have very specific direction from their team car, which includes Included Brian Holm and Rolf Aldag. Uh, Mark, you can be six or seven through the last it's, corner with 800 meter. It's headwind, and Eric said we have to start later than, than yesterday. Okay. It's going to be long otherwise. And if possible, stay on the right hand side for the sprint. That covers him. The right side. If possible, on the right side, that's the best bit. Bottles. Okay, Anybody else have finished bottle? That's it. That's it. Take a bottle. George Hincappy would be one of the whole crew that would start pushing the pace. Look at that, the yellow jersey having to go over the road furniture. When you're going into a headwind and you see a 90 degree turn, you have got to get to the front because you know when they get to that turn, the crosswinds are going to blow. After that turn, it did indeed happen the way you predicted. There would be a break with Columbia HTC pushing the pace. When Michael Rogers, the world time trial champion, and Lance Armstrong and Yaroslav Popovich are on the front of a breakaway, you know they're going to make some time and they're going to take maximum advantage of a spontaneous situation. Remnants of the breakaway being swept up. Incredible day of racing. They would catch the four men who would be out in front for most of the day. Then it was just put your head down, use the teamwork with 10 kilometers to go. Even a couple of the Astana guys, Imar Zubeldi and Yaroslav Popovich, who also included Lance Armstrong. But guess what? Alberto Contador, their supposed GC number one, he was caught back. He was caught in the second group, but so were a lot of the other GC contenders contenders probably at the end of the tour will it won't make that much of a difference except when it comes to stage wins and Mark Cavendish adds another one great riding by his teammates to blow the race apart in the crosswinds and then have enough energy to do the lead out.
There he is, Renshaw, about to pass off to Cavendish in the green jersey. We've seen this one before, but Torhushov trying to make a change to the script on the right in the all-white, but it wouldn't be. Hushov coming up fast, but Cavendish too tough. That is an unbelievable result for Team Columbia, and they are celebrating great riding by those guys. Yesterday, the pressure was off when Cav won today. The celebration ever so sweet. Now with his second win of the Tour de France, we're only three stages in. Celebrations come from Lance Armstrong himself, but what can you say as we wrap up those Cadillac performance highlights except a very smart ride by the yellow jersey earner, Fabian Cancellara. Had to go into the traffic island, ride through the gravels, notice the danger, knew what was going to happen, and was astute enough and had the power to jump across, get in position. He was the only man from Saxo Bank to make that front group, so that's why there wasn't such a big chase from behind. Here are your Hampton Hotel's overall standings after three stages. Cancellara now in front of Tony Martin. A big shakeup, Lance Armstrong, because of the time gap in today's stage, he moves into third. Lance Armstrong from 10th up to third. Very, very intelligent racing from what is now maybe the best man that's ever ridden this race. Unbelievable. Lance Armstrong never ceases to amaze us. Astana still with four men in the top 10. It's now Levi Leipheimer in that 10th position. We take a look at some of the other notables. Van de Velde from Garmin Slipstream in 22nd. Defending champ Carlos Sostra now finds himself a minute and 47 seconds down. Lance Armstrong, a busy day, a smart day. He talked with Robbie Ventura. Lance, very impressive ride today. How important was this stage, not only for GC hopes, but also for cementing your leadership on this team? Well, it was not a, a day that you would look at and say it was a, a, a critical day. Uh, relatively flat, we could see that it had a lot of uh, open areas, hey. a lot of sea front, but um, you know, those days you got to just stay up front, and, and I don't know what it does for the overall. I mean, 40 seconds is 40 seconds, and changes the dynamic going into tomorrow with the team time trial, and uh, you know, it's it's. I, I've, I've preferred to, to stay out of the, the drama and polemics of, uh, of who's the leader of the team. I've won the tour seven times. I, I think I deserve uh, a little bit of credit. But uh, Alberto's a great rider too, and, and uh, you know we got to go in with two leaders. But but that doesn't mean that you can't take advantage of opportunities like today. Were you surprised that more GC guys like Alberto didn't take advantage of the uh, crosswinds today? It wasn't that they didn't take advantage of it. They just they weren't there. I mean it was it was a lot of uh, a lot of fighting all day long, left, right, left, right, and guessing, really guessing on what the wind was doing. And so uh, it, it was just one of those moments where. You know, made it to the front. I tried to be at the front for all the corners, but it was one, it was the one corner that went. Were you surprised that Columbia dropped the hammer like they did? No, they were riding. I mean, they were pulling back the group. It was it was six minutes, five minutes, four minutes, and they stopped, went back up a little bit, and they started to ride again. They were on the front. It wasn't as if they ambushed. Just uh, they were on the front. When anybody's on the front, and you see a turn coming up, and you know it's windy, it doesn't take a genius to know you better be there. Thanks, Lance. Good luck. First Cavendish, Bob, now Lance. These guys aren't mincing their words in the interview today. You just heard Lance say it. It doesn't take a genius to figure this out. Well, that Astana dinner tonight, how quiet is it going to be at the table? It might be a little bit quiet on Alberto Contador's side of the table, but on Lance's side of the table, I think that they'll be uh, uh, quite pleased with the way things transpired. One thing that we haven't seen from Lance Armstrong is the, the necessity to attack on the flats. He's never had to go out and get time on the flat stages. We've never seen him be an attacking rider in those type of stages because he's had such a big buffer after the mountain stages. We've never seen him really aggressive in the flat stages. And now we see when Lance needs time, he finds a way to find it in the Tour de France. It's remarkable. I'm going to predict something huge. Lance in yellow after tomorrow's stage. Well, Stay tuned to that. <laughs> we will indeed, but let's talk more about tomorrow. How does Alberto Contador look over at Lance Armstrong tomorrow in that team time trial and trust him to give his all for AC? That's a great question, but it's mutually beneficial, beneficial to both riders if they do a good team time trial. Contador for later in the tour will need that time against the other climbers, and Lance will be satisfied if his team does a good ride. They're capable of winning the team time trial. They've trained for that. They've brought a team for that. They knew that that would probably be the best way to get time on some of their rivals on weaker teams, mm -hmm. and so they're going to go as absolutely flat out as they can, both Contador and Armstrong. Any differences they may have, they have to 
set aside for tomorrow's stage. All the experts are predicting it's really going to come down to four teams tomorrow. Astana, as we've talked about, Garmin Slipstream, Saxo Bank, and of course, the other squad, Columbia HTC. So let's take a look at the Montpellier team time trial, Bob. We're still down in the south, still down in the heat, and this stage is going to bring some more heat. It's a team time trial. It goes out into the hills and the twisting roads around Montpellier, finishes just on the outskirts of town, 39 kilometers. That's about 25 miles. It's going to be a great day of racing. You can't miss tomorrow's stage. Bob Stapleton wasn't able to join us today. Perhaps, though, we'll see him in the coming days. His team tomorrow with another quest. That stage four time trial starts live at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. Bob and I will be back for our expanded coverage at 8 p.m. The heat may have lulled most of the peloton to sleep, but an assertive Columbia crew meant only an attentive few survived the surge. The biggest beneficiaries of Columbia's show of force were two men we'll one day read about in the history books. The Manx missile exploded for another stage win, going back to back. Mark Cavendish delivering the goods again. Lance Armstrong's always been one of the smartest riders on the road. Today, he used his brain as much as he used his brawn, staying with the leaders and in the process, leaping up the overall standings from 10th to 3rd and passing his teammate, Alberto Contador. Fabian Cancellara showed his strength today as well, single-handedly representing Saxo Bank in the front pack. His reward the yellow jersey for another day it was an epic day out on the road but it may just have been an hors d'oeuvre for the team time trial tomorrow for phil liggett paul sherwin bob roll and our entire crew i'm craig hummer thanks for watching